Today I'd like to invite you to join me in a discussion of one of the great moral and civic questions of our day. What should be the role of money and markets in our society? Today there are fewer and fewer things that money can't buy. If you should be sentenced to a jail term in Santa Barbara, California, if that ever happens to any of you, you should know that if you don't like the standard accommodations, and if you can afford it, you can buy a prison cell upgrade. It's true. For how much do you suppose? What would you guess? It's about $90 a night. Or suppose you're going to Washington, D.C. You want to sit in on a congressional hearing. But you don't want to stand in the long line that sometimes forms for the free public seats. You can now go to a line standing company, engage them, and they will hire for you a homeless person or someone else who will stand on the line, maybe overnight if it's a popular hearing, so that you can take your place just before the hearing begins. You can do that also to hear oral arguments before the Supreme Court. Hire a line stander. Or suppose you want to contribute to alleviating a tragic social problem in this country. Every year, thousands of babies born to drug-addicted mothers. There is a charity you could contribute to that uses a cash incentive to try to solve this problem. The charity offers any drug-addicted woman $300 to undergo sterilization. The use of a market incentive to try to solve a social problem. Or suppose you're a pharmaceutical company and you have a new drug that you want to bring to the attention of consumers. By now it's commonplace that you can market directly to consumers with ads on television. You've seen them, I'm sure. If you watch sporting events or the nightly news on television, you could be forgiven for thinking that the greatest health crisis in the world today is not malaria or river blindness or sleeping sickness, but a rampant epidemic of erectile dysfunction, marketing drugs directly to consumers. Or if you want to fight a war, but you don't have enough soldiers, you can hire private military companies to do the job in Iraq and Afghanistan. There were more paid military contractors on the ground than there were US military troops. Over the past three decades, we have drifted, almost without realizing it, from having a market economy to becoming a market society. The difference is this. A market economy is a tool, a valuable and effective tool, for organizing productive activity. Market economies have brought prosperity and affluence to countries around the world. But a market society is different. It's a place where almost everything is up for sale. It's a, a way of life where market thinking and market values reach in to spheres of life previously governed by other values, non-market values. Take education, and here's where I'd like to begin our discussion. There are many school districts around the country that are struggling with the challenge of improving the academic achievement of kids from poor backgrounds. A number of experiments are being done in major school districts, urban school districts primarily, to try to lift up academic achievement through the use of cash incentives, pay for grades. This has been tried in New York and Washington, D.C., and here in Chicago. A few years ago, there was a pilot program with 20 Chicago schools that offered kids payment for good grades, $50 for an A, $35 for a B. 
In Dallas, they have another version. They pay second graders $2 for each book they read. I'd like to see what you think about this use of cash incentives to try to improve academic achievement. People disagree about it. So let's see what you think. <laughs> 